We're joined now by Innocent Chukuma, who is the regional head of Ford Foundation. Thank you for coming on today. Thanks a lot. Well, before you joined Ford Foundation, you've done extensive research uh, with the police, uh, different perspectives, but th th those who speak about key challenges about welfare, professional capability, what, in your perspective, do you think is chief to the challenge that the police faces today? I think it's essentially data, scarcity of data. Um, you can't deal with uh, security challenges without having reliable information to enable you plan. And when you deploy, to also assess the impact of uh, your activities. And as we speak, the Nigerian police force stopped publishing its annual report in 2009. And that was when Clean Foundation stopped printing the annual report. So right now, you don't have a place you can go and see a data of uh, crime that happened in the country over the past year. What the different parts of crime are uh, its resources. And then the alternative sources of information on crime that we also had available through the Clean Foundation's annual crime and safety survey was rested in 2013 when MacArthur Foundation that was uh, stopping it changed its priority. So right now, for police operations to even know the true extent of crime in Nigeria, it's a dark figure. They, they don't know it. And without the information, they are, everybody's grouping in the dark. And that is the beginning. That's heartbreaking. That is the beginning mm. of uh, any security how, operation. How Data is everything. Not, how can we not have that? You know, there's also no incentives, in my view, to keep um, accurate and reliable data on crime. Because if you are in charge of a police division or you are in charge of a state command and you are keeping accurate red data of the level of robbery, uh, homicide, uh, kidnapping and all that, and the others are not doing the same. So your state will keep reporting high level of crime. And the question is, what is it that you are not doing for these crimes to go up? So you will now be uh, reporting of what you are doing and not doing. So next time you part the figures and reduce it. And everybody knows that and they do it. So you will, uh, I, when they make it available or when uh, it's needed for any meeting at the villa or state level, so DPOs will hurriedly be asked, uh, let's have figures, and then they post whatever figure that is available. So depending on the time of the year you ask for information on crime, you get different numbers and you can't plan anything based on that. Why do you think that there is a supposedly increase in the number of security uh, personnel getting involved in such activities, crime activities, like Chamberlain did ask the general, why has that uh, seems to be, to be uh, on the increase? Well, I would hesitate to also agree that there's actually an increase in, in the number. Because the question is, who is keeping the records. It might be a function of more reporting by the media, more interest of the media on the issues than a through uh, uh, reflection of an increase. So again, because we're dealing in an era of uh, instant news, any particular case is picked up by a thousand and one platform. So it gives the impression that something is going on. But that is not to belittle the impact of even one soldier one police officer or any other security agent being involved uh, in crime because this is a, a betrayal of the whole uh, confidence society imposes on that person but as to actual number whether it's increasing or decreasing that i can say so uh, what where does that take us next now that uh, we're trying to look into how this can be contained as much as possible. We've had reports of uh, the NSCDC, some, some of the officials engaged in this kind of practice mm -hmm. where uh, they were illegally lifting uh, AGO. Mm -hmm. Is there a deterrent? Well, I think the, the retired general that uh, spoke earlier had highlighted uh, some of the things that needed to, to be done. One is a proper uh, control of the movement of the security officials to know that, make sure that when they leave their barracks or their duty posts, there's accurate record of where they are going and when they are coming back. Because it's when they are out there in the loose and nobody's keeping record of them through network of friends and family relationship, they get into all kinds of uh, activities. But also to make sure that when there are reported cases, that the full arm of the law, you know, is brought to bear 
uh, on them and not using all kinds of uh, devices that at the end of the day get them. And if uh, exemplary punishment is imposed, those who are thinking of doing similar thing would uh, think twice. But for me, the greatest, if you are thinking of prevention, he talked about these joint tax forces. Whenever you miss security agencies, the police, the military and all that, to do, go on on these tax forces or in an indefinite period of time, they learn the vices of each other. The police learn that of the military, the military learn that of the police, and the police learn that of the civil defense. And when the tax forces are disbanded, they continue with this when they go back. And also the fact that they are watching the civil authority, what they're doing. You know, we have a situation in this country where at a time, a fifth of the oil produced in this country, you know, was stolen, running into millions of uh, dollars and hundreds of millions of dollars. And these security agents know that people in civil authorities are involved one way or the other. And they're asking themselves, are we not Nigerians? And when they retire, you saw him talk about how can somebody live on 200,000 naira alone mm. on pension. And that's even when the pension comes. So welfare is a problem. It's a problem. It's actually going back to basics because a lot of things have gone wrong in this country. It's like when you buy a factory or a company as scrap, you begin afresh to build processes and procedure, discipline that will make you know, that uh, company thrive again. I think we have gone so bad in the way things are run in this country that we really need to go back to basics, in my view. Do we need, because I mean, several people have spoken about some sort of restructuring the police force mm -hmm. and you heard that severally mm -hmm. what do you think of it well it's an ongoing issue uh, but again i will hasten to add just reforming the police alone or restructuring the police alone won't do the problem Doesn't i agree it depend on the kind of restructure that yes, I mean, I, I know where you're going, the whole issue of uh, decentralizing the police so yeah. that state government can, that will add to uh, a solution port. But then it goes beyond that because there's also a social dimension to everything we're dealing with. In the last couple of days, you and I have been watching TV and seeing what happened uh, you know, to the bombing where a whole community was sacked and basically put on canoes to God knows where. There are children who are in that, who are growing up, there are youngsters who see that the society owes them nothing if they don't take their own destiny in their own hands. And how they do that, few years down the line, we begin to see it. It happens in all these places. So yes, we restructure the police, but then increasing policing capacity alone won't address the social problems we're dealing with. I know we need to go to break soon, but let me see if I can squeeze this in. Mm. We've seen different... <laughs> okay, it's just <laughs> almost there, but... Okay, you don't think that we could just restructure a loan mm -hmm. and get the kind of results you need. All right, maybe one will come back in a moment and I'll, I'll put that question in so you can have enough time to just respond to it. Mm -hmm. We might as well just take a break now. Uh, we'll be back in a moment. Join us again.